You can follow Andy Katz on Twitter at the Andy Katz. You can see his work with uh, NCAA, also on Turner Sports Big Ten Network. He is with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. What is up, Andy? How are you today? How are you guys doing? Doing awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, should we be nervous by the SEC's performance against the Big 12 if we are SEC basketball fans? No. Uh, these challenges are all about matchups. And, uh, you know, look, Alabama, I still had Alabama at three. Uh, they ended up being at four in the AP top 25. Uh, you know, look, the reality is they were on the road. They were due for a game like this. Oklahoma is thirsty, hungry, desperate for a big time win. You know, I, I'm not going to read too much into it. Everyone, it seems like this season's got one of those games in them. It happens. I mean, Kansas lost three in a row. They go to Kentucky and win that game. Uh, and, and that's on the road. You know, because it would be kind of crazy to think Bill Self's Kansas Jayhawks would lose four in a row. <laughs> so uh, they were desperate, and maybe more so than Kentucky. And uh, so I'm not going to read too much into it. Uh, Auburn, I'm not completely sold on yet. And, uh, again, their schedule has not been great in terms of, uh, you know, they, they've had some weird results. I mean, I think back, way back when they had that 43-42 game against Northwestern, which has proven to be a better team as the season went along. But still, it's kind of a weird game and cancun back in uh i think it was late november so i'm still high in alabama saw them in portland firsthand and loved them then and continue to to ride that 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 wave with with, with the tide i think they're going to be one of the teams to beat in march uh almost everyone says big 12 is the best conference top to bottom though if i asked you best team yes, in the big yes. 12 yeah yes. i get that okay if that is the question Yes. Uh, no, I know you knew that, or you, you yes. think that. I was just going to ask you, of all those teams, because they've got what seemed to be, you know, five to six really, really good teams. What is the best team in the Big 12? So, I still will lean Kansas. Um, you know, I, I still would lean that direction because I think they've got the player who can, uh, you know, can go off the most in Jalen Wilson. He had 38 in that loss to K-State uh in in uh, manhattan uh i really like and they got experience i do like though kansas state with keontae johnson who everyone in the sec knows well from his time at florida before his you know collapsing and and, and remarkable story that he's come back to play at this level play let, a, let alone play uh and marquise noel who's been a big time score for them uh, i'm not sold long term on texas whether chris beard was the head coach or not uh, and Baylor, you know, Keontae George is a big time talent, but their front court isn't what it was in the past. Uh, so, and, and Iowa state, they defend really well. I don't know if they have the offense to win, you know, four games to get to the final four. Uh, but I, I like them. Now the, the plus for the sec is because the bottom of the sec has struggled. That's going to allow Alabama and Tennessee to have great records better than the big 12's top and that's why i feel fairly confident that we're going to see at least one if not two number one seeds come out of the sec whereas the big 12 because they're beating each other up um they're going to sort of stack the two and three line but they may not get a one uh and and really what's going to be really interesting in, on february 18th is when the ncaa selection committee is going to you know put out their top 16 the first look the reveal and if things hold to this point, there's a good chance that we're going to see Tennessee and Alabama on that one line. And then it becomes, you know, where, where do we put teams? Um, and if that happens, I think Tennessee would be the team that would be in New York, uh, Alabama in Kansas city, Purdue would be in Louisville, you know, in these regions. And then probably Houston would be the team in Vegas. If not Houston, uh, then whoever at the moment in time is leading the big 12. Um, what do you make of Arkansas right now? We've been trying to figure them out all year and Eric Musselman may be listening or not listening to your answer. Cause I think he's still trying to figure out what Arkansas is right now. Well, they haven't been healthy and you know, they're one of those schools that in the preseason, we saw their roster with Nick Smith as their, you know, lead, uh, obviously, uh, you know, blacks, another, they've got a great freshman class, but how many games, how many practices have they had with the entire team? Uh, probably very few. Uh, and, um, you know, 
they've just been riddled with injuries. So their potential is now completely changed. Now it's a question of, can they make sure they make the tournament? Uh, they're, they're still a tournament team, but they easily could fall out. Uh, you know, that they, they played well against Baylor, not well enough to win, which is fine uh, because Baylor obviously is ascending, but that's the question right now with Arkansas. Um, it, it, now it's a question of before it was okay. How high a seed will they be? Now it's a question of, you know, will they get in? I think ultimately they will. Uh, but you know, they're going to be one of those teams. that's going to need to win some games down the stretch. The Andy Katz on Twitter, the Andy Katz, see him with NCAA.com. He'll be on with Turner, the big 10 network, uh, throughout the NCAA tournament. He's with us on the Johnston RV center.com hotline. Few teams more so than Purdue have been uh, responsible for sending me to some remote outpost in America as part of punishments for losing the bracket on this show. Why should I believe this Purdue team when I never can trust Purdue? No, it's a legitimate thing. Uh, and I would tell you that the, in 2019 and last season, um, there's no excuse. Like it just, it, I was at that game in Louisville. Carson Edwards went off, you know, Virginia ties the game at the end of regulation and on that fluke play, uh, the Dia, Dia, Dia Cut, Mohammed, uh, Dia Cate, Dia Cate, sure. uh, ends up, ends up, um, converting right at the buzzer that should not have happened. They should have won that game and that final four, you know, legitimately they could have won it last year. I, I, it's a complete head scratcher because, they had a week to prepare for St. Peter's. The St. the 15-2 upset of Kentucky was crazy enough, but it almost never happens that that team then goes to the Sweet 16 and wins again because, you know, we saw a couple of years ago with Oral Roberts, that same thing happens where that higher profile team, Power 5, has now five days to prepare for this Cinderella story. That one made no sense to me. They clearly were not connected. They should not have lost that game. So it's legitimate concerns about Purdue in 2019 and 2022. 23, number one, I think it's a better team. It may not be as talented as last year. Everyone knows their role. They're all in. Zach Eady is as dominant a post player as we've seen in quite like true post. You know, you got to go back decades to a player like him. Uh, And no one has seemed to have a true answer for him double triple team him uh you know the Rutgers win by the way was kind of fluky too uh Cam Spencer hit a shot it came it was literally a last possession win otherwise they'd be undefeated uh so they lost that game but Zach Eady has been a rock anchor consistent now he's got shooters that have been consistent for him maybe not percentage wise but timely wise Fletcher Lawyer freshman no fear his numbers have been up and down, but when the game's on the line, he's won a couple. Uh, Braden Smith, tremendous, gritty player who doesn't shy away from anything, and he has exceeded his expectations at that position. Uh, Ethan Morton on Sunday hit some shots for them. Mason Gillis has accepted his role, much more of a defender. You know, just everything about this, and then uh, Trey Coffin Wren. Uh, is sort of just sort of a, a, a rotation guy that when when Edie's off the floor, he and Caleb first, they've been able to score in the post. And then David Jenkins, who was a transfer a year ago, he made shots against Michigan State. So I just feel like everyone is buying in. They're going to be protected by probably going to Louisville. Um, and, uh, you know, once they get out of the first round and then in the Sweet 16 Elite Eight, I think the place will be like a Purdue home court. I just feel like unless there's any injuries, hopefully not, this – Yes, this could be the year. (laughs) Not believing it. You mentioned the former Texas coach. What do you think the future is for Chris Beard? So, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen legally. Um, But, you know, let's, based on that, let's, you're you're under the assumption he's not in jail and, uh, you know, that he gets cleared of some form of charges. So if that happens legally, that he is cleared in some form or fashion and is not serving any time or anything like that, um, you know, it's one of two things going to happen. Uh, I think someone in his sphere is going to have to take him under his wing to rehabilitate him coaching wise. And I do think that would happen. 
um, at some point. Who that is, I don't know. It would have to be at a school that feels like that head coach has great equity, strength in the program, not some newbie, you know, who's got great buy-in from the president, the AD and all that. Then if things go well, and I don't know how many years we're talking, does he get another head coaching job? I could see it. I could see it, whether it's in the G League, is it uh, at a lower level within the state of Texas? You know, where, where, you know, is it a, you know, UT River Grand? I don't know. I mean, Rio Grand. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm throwing things out. You know, does he go back to a Little Rock, a place like that? I could see it, but I think there's a lot of hurdles to get there. So you'd be shocked if he's a Power 5 coach next year? Floored. Okay. Floored. No, I like that. Andy, I want well, to... here's the thing. And, and look, um, the reason being is... You know, the fact that, and I, you know, I guess say this correctly, when we've seen things in the past, whether it's a DUI um, or if there was an allegation of a, an assault, um, you know, the fact that in this case, there is a police report with physical markings, bites, I mean, I just think the details matter here and the details of this assault, I think, would derail him from getting any kind of head coaching job, not just high profile, head coaching job in the short term. Uh, I think there's going to have to be, first of all, the legal system has to go through. Then secondly, uh, there would have to be some sort of you know process that I think he would have to go through. Is it anger management? I don't know. Um, you know, this is a little out of my realm, but I, I just think in the public space, public opinion, the details of this case matter as to whether or not he is given another chance um, in the short term. Long term, you know, we'll see. We'll just see how it plays out. Uh, do you agree I, with my do you agree with my assessment on that? Uh, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I do. I mean, I, I, again, because of the details, you know, it's one of the things that everybody leaves out. Um you know, if charges were completely dropped, I mean, people get desperate for winners, though. The guy can coach. I know. I just think that in this instance, you know, that police report comes up. It's at the presser. It's everywhere. And I think the details of it would matter. Um, you know, the other thing, too, that we've not heard from him. You know, what I mean, uh, like, we're still waiting for that. And I think probably his legal team is waiting for it to shake out before he comes in front of a camera. And... You know, is it he with his fiance and they detail everything that happened? I don't know. But I think all of that has to happen at some point. Yeah. And then again, it really matters who's making the hire. You know, who is that athletic director? Who is that president? What's the culture like at that school? You know, I, I think a lot of those things matter about whether or not someone like Chris, who was who had a good reputation, who was well liked, um, you know, had a social media presence. You know, whether or not someone like him gets that second chance, I think it depends where and who is making the hire. Yeah, the the great Bobby Knight left Indiana and went way off the beaten path. It was a power five job, but it was way at Texas Tech, which looked very different back then. I wanted to ask but, you. But let me, let yeah. me just add to that. Gerald Myers was a good friend of his at Texas Tech. Myers was the former coach at Texas Tech, good friend of Bob Knight, was very influential in the Lubbock community. So... Like, I, you know, people may push back on me on this, but I don't think Bob Knight was getting any job. Like, it had to be the right job with the right people in place that were going to hire him. Like, I never believed, I think at that time, Minnesota might have been opening. Uh, I can't remember the timing of that. Was that when Tubby went there? I can't remember. But I remember Minnesota was out there. And I just didn't think the people who were in power at Minnesota within the Big Ten that knew everything were going to make that hire. Uh, I wanted to ask you before you got out of here, everyone knows our love for football, college football in this state, uh, but we have a great fan base for basketball as well. Auburn's fans with Bruce Pearl, they've got their guy. Alabama fans feel like they have their guy with Nate Oates, but you keep hearing Nate's name being mentioned. If this job ever comes open, if this job ever comes open, what do you think Nate Oates' future is? Do you think he's a guy that – will be on a lot of short lists for some really premier blue blue blood jobs down the road? 
Yes, although, um, you know, he – and look, I remember when Mark Gottfried had Alabama number one. Um, you know, he's got a role in there right now, and that has not been easy to do. We'll see if Coleman Coliseum can be replaced or upgraded or what. I know there's some chatter about that. Uh, he's got an AD, who I, one of my favorite people in that position, and Greg Byrne. Uh, and, you know, I think there's, the timing is right for him to stay there. I also would say that this is not an era to leave the SEC or the Big Ten. I know these are basketball jobs, but because of the money in football, the television deals, you got to really want to leave a Big Ten or an SEC job for something pretty significant because there's so much security right now financially in being in those two leagues. And I don't see that changing in the short term. So if you've got a good thing going in the SEC or the Big Ten, I don't see why you would leave because there's some uncertainty in some of these other conferences right now, especially non-football playing ones, even like the Big East, uh, that I would say that stay where you are. If you like it, you're winning. They like you. No reason to leave. Tremendous stuff from Andy Katz. Go follow him on Twitter at the Andy Katz. Read his stuff. Watch his stuff at NCAA.com. You'll see him on Turner Sports Big Ten Network as well during uh, March Madness. Andy, thank you so much for the time. We greatly appreciate it. All right, thanks, guys. All right, buddy, take care. Andy with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs> 